Does she always does her homework? Uh, this time weeks. That's true. You've been much better this time weeks. I've been kind of proud of you on that. I don't, I don't think, think I'm ever right. homework this, assignment. Since we started the school. Did you do yours? Um, oh. But so, yeah, notice how it's 25 works. divided by 3. And then if you literally actually take the time to divide it in, it goes 8 times. And so you have a remainder of 3. So 8 plus 1 third. That's how I got 8 and a third gallons per minute. Versus eight, so that's the higher rate. Okay. Yeah, I need a calculator so I can start no. doing that because I didn't do that. Well, I mean, you can just do the long division. That's literally what I did. I'll sell you mine. You need a calculator. I'll sell you mine. All right. Any any other questions off of this? Eleven was hopefully ten and eleven. We we're good on, but those are the most important. So if you have questions about those, you need to ask those. And I got the, the discrete and continuous for 11 and 10, but I didn't get the arithmetic on either of them. On this? Mm -hmm. So what does it mean to be arithmetic? I still don't understand. An additive rate of change. An additive rate of change. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's arithmetic, it means you're repeatedly adding. Notice this is a recursive definition. So the current value is equal to the previous value plus 3. And you could also even make a table for this. Notice when n is 1, f of 1 is 5. So then you're going to add 3, and 3, and 3. So because you're repeatedly adding 3, it's arithmetic. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Versus over here, it's hard to see these points, exactly what they are. But remember, when it's arithmetic, it's going to have that linear shape. That additive rate of change is linear. So when it's got this curve here, which it is discrete, right? You wouldn't actually connect these points, but you can see that curve in there, and it's going to flatten out. That's a geometric or exponential idea. Okay? Any other questions before we move on? Okay. By the way, this was checking for accuracy. So if it's six problems, what is that? What percentage is that per problem? Actually, that's more than six. Yeah, we already done number ten. Okay, so that's seven problems. My bad. Okay. And so a hundred divided by seven is roughly fourteen percent. Now I will point out on. These like 10 and 11, if you got the discrete right, but maybe you got the arithmetic or geometric wrong, you still got half of it, right? Yeah, so so if you take that 14% and split it in two, each part so here is 7%. Okay, so you can give yourself the credit for parts of those. Well, we're all good? All good. Okay. So tally up your score, uh, put today's date with it, what is today? just as a heads up, <laughs> yeah, the most important part is your evidence and rating. Well, uh, so we'll talk more about that later. No, it's today the 26th. I'm pretty sure that's the middle of Thanksgiving week, isn't it? <laughs> I hope so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I may be wrong, it might be right after the break, but like... Actually, right after the break, it will be like December 1st. Yo, you remember that time where she was like, your attitude, and then she started acting like this? Same. Yeah. I remember that too. Yeah. It was like five minutes ago. I know. Yes, sir. I have a question about that. Okay. Yeah. My dad leaves again. What? As these. December 1st. My dad leaves again. So, 7, 14. That's a 7. Yeah, so 7 and 14 total. Yep. Is that all you got? And you didn't get any of these? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which that included for me all. Because I was trying to divide it by 9 because I read something over here about it. But look, it's, no, but no, so they say 1 6 x equals 10. So, so that's 1 divided by 6, so multiply by 6. 
Okay. That's the inverse. But why didn't you, if you missed all those, why didn't you ask a question? What? Out of the line. Is that how we were going to move on to next when you said that? They're right here. It's a heart. Oh. That's a, it's I a didn't, heart going. I thought we were moving on from four, three, four. No, it's all the questions are up, or all the answers are up here. Ask what questions so you have. Up there, I just need to go ahead and ask. Yeah. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. God, I forgot. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm being talkative today. Carolyn, shut up. Okay. We can sort. It's okay to be talkative. I'm just, if you have a question, ask a question. <laughs> all right. So we all have our grades on there. We have, we've asked all the questions that we need to ask. Yes, sir. We've dated our grades. Sure. Okay. I don't know what you said. Okay. Oh, no. It's cool. Technically, you can't do that. No, you can't date your grades. Technically. All right, we're going to wrap up 2.2, technically. And then we're going to start 2.3 so that people like Carolina who are bailing on us tomorrow know what they're missing out. All the bots are going to be in here. Like, be you know, if you get a ticket to the game, you can just, like, not go to school. I've heard about that. But you got you to get signed But I'm actually game. going to the but game. So. I'm, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. Either. You, you have to get signed at the game. Oh, do you? Yeah, I have people. You have to get signed at the game. I'm actually going. No excuse for the whole day. All right, so we're going to work on uh, 2.2 and 2.3. Uh, Gavin, can you read our first objective for us today? I can identify the domain of functions with additive rates of change and multiplicative direct rates of change. Sorry, Gavin. Some people were too cool to listen and they were talking, so can you reread that objective? I would really rather not. Too bad. You can thank McKay and Caroline for having to reread it. Whoa, okay. so I can identify the domain of functions with additive rates of change and multiplicative rates of change. There we go. So we need to pay attention to right to identifying domain. Uh, what notation are we using for that domain? Set. 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 We also talked a little bit about interval, but mostly we're using that set notation for now. Um, Jeffrey, can you read our second objective for us? Differentiate. Differentiate. Exponential. But that is important to notice that exponents are really an important part of that because an exponential function has an exponent or a variable for the exponent, meaning you're repeatedly multiplying. Um, and I do want to just remind you this word differentiate, that just means tell the difference between. Right? You're trying to tell the difference between these ideas. We all got to number seven yesterday, correct? Does that sound right? Something like that. Something like that? Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. How far did we get with number seven? Yeah, oh, we didn't the house, start. you know, two point two out. We didn't start. Um, you didn't start it. Uh, no, number seven. I did A, B, C, and D. I was gonna say, wait, number seven? Yeah. The medicine we, one? We literally uh, did this together. I did. I don't remember doing that. I did seven. I don't think we did this one that far. I accidentally did. Yeah. Me and Cam. Oh, wait. Yeah. Me and Zay were working on it. You and Zay were working on it? Yeah. Oh. I was saying, I'm pretty sure you did some of it already. Okay. Let's, so let's go over at least the beginning yeah. of this, make sure we all understand it since we've already gotten to this point. Yes, sir. Before we get to the final two. Tomorrow's uh, thing that they just read, can I read one of them? The objectives? Yeah. Yeah, because you haven't picked them yet. Like, Seriously? At all. That's my bad. Yeah, remind so, me about that. I tried to get everyone, but like. I've been I don't just, know. I had the radar all the time. the loud people. <laughs> that, that's true. Those loud people, the ones who are like trying to look into the camera and say hi to everybody, you know, <laughs> those ones who are paying attention. Yeah, those people, those are the ones I like to pick on. I have heard that his name is Quiet Kid, so I can understand that. Okay. So. Why you're loud. <laughs> so, looking at a table, what are the two variables that, uh, that we're playing with here looking at? M. M for? Medicine. Medicine? H. For and hours. H for hours. So you said M first. Is that supposed to go right here? No. no it's supposed to be swapped. Supposed to be swapped. Why is that? Because your Y and X, something like that. Axes. Well, do the hours depend on how much medicine is there, or do the, does the medicine depend on the hours? The medicine depends on the hours because the medicine goes away over time. Dang. Good, Good response. So at hour zero, how much medicine was there? Uh, all of it. 60. All of it, or 60. 100%. Now, I want to point out, I really like what it, part of what Gavin's saying there is he is acknowledging this idea that all of it is there, or 100%, because we are dealing with percentages, right? Now, 
a tricky part to this, or something I do want you to remember, because a lot of students do uh, forget about this. Whenever we're dealing with a percent of something, what mathematical operation is that? Multiplication. Yeah. Multiplication. So more than likely, what type of function are we dealing with if it's a percent of? Exponential. Exponential, right? That multiplicative rate of change is at play here. So, um, what am I multiplying by each time to get to the next amount of medicine. 0.8. But where's that 0.8 coming from? Because I see a 0 0.2, or I see a 20%. That's the mathematical equation to get percentage. Say again? So remember how Gavin, you earlier said that we're starting at 100%, we're starting with all of it? Yes, sir. And of that 100%, every hour we're losing how much? We're losing how much? 20, 20. Remember, it breaks down such that 20% becomes ineffective. So we're losing 20%, so we are left with 80%, right? So we have 80% of whatever is previous. So times 0 0.8, I think it gave us 48. Yeah, Past 48. that, you're going to have to tell me what the numbers 38. are. 38.4. What was it? 38.4. 30.72. 24.576. 24? Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Uh, did we go beyond that? Uh, I didn't go beyond that. Uh, did anybody go beyond that? 19.75. Sure. 6.5? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, there's a good table. Please notice we do need to label the tops of the table, the, the variables up there. Um, we also need a graph for this. Now, I need you all to pay attention. Because I think I talked about this a little bit last week. Not last week. On Tuesday. It feels like last week because we had yesterday all. Oh, if you need grab paper, please come grab some, right? It is important that we are paying attention to and keeping our scale consistent. Otherwise, everything can be thrown off a little bit. Now, before I even try to start putting my numbers on here, though, what is going along the x-axis? What's going along the y? Hours is at the bottom. Hours on the bottom. Okay, your independent variable always goes on the x-axis. So medicine... And milligrams is along the Y. Okay? So, I'm only looking at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 hours. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Please notice, it's not perfect. But is it at least, am I trying to keep it the same length between each hour? I'm giving an attempt, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. However, if you use a, a piece of graph paper, that can help significantly. Now, what amount of medicine am I trying to get up to? Zero uh, percent. Get up to? So the maximum amount of medicine? Sixty, right? So what are some good scales that I could go by to get up to that sixty? Ten. Ten, okay. So maybe going by ten. So ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. 60. Notice, I even just marked those spaces to try to get it close, and I might even go back and redo this without putting the numbers in, just so I can redo it quickly if need be. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, 90. Now, I will say the more accurate that you can get, the better. So I might even add some uh, fives in there. But as long as I mark every 10, then I can clearly tell that this is every 5. And that can give me a little bit more accuracy. Those are small things to pay attention to. Man, Gavin, great job on the paying attention. Thank you. So zero hours in, there were 60 milligrams of medicine. One hour in, there was 48. Notice by going by these fives, I've made it a little bit easier to tell where that 48 would be. Two, there was 38.4. Three was 30.72, four was 24, and five was 19.6. So when we start to look at this graph even, does that look linear or does it kind of have that exponential curve to it? It looks linear. Exponential curve. See, I'm seeing a little bit of a curve. Notice how much bigger this space is than this distance. 
So the only way for that distance to change is for it to have that multiplicative rate change. Remember, we already said we were repeatedly multiplying. So it's not linear. We all get with that idea? Now, this is the most important part. Should this be continuous or should this be discrete? Should I connect those points and go between? Yes, actually, I should. Because there's always medicine there. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's going to be draining. Yeah. So the medicine is constantly decaying over time. Um, it's not just going to be here and then all of a sudden an hour later it jumps down. Yeah, it takes time to go away. It takes time for it to go I'm away. Tired. So there we go. Uh, now we still need an equation, and I think most of us got to this equation. Um, don't forget that you can actually write this equation with just x and f of x if you want to. Personally, I'm going to use my variables. Medicine, and what does the medicine depend upon? Times. So m of h. Mm -hmm. That's the same idea as f of x. <laughs> it's a function depending on what x is. It's a function of medicine depending on how many hours have gone by. And so this equation should start out with medicine. How much medicine do we start with? And then what are we doing with that 60 milligrams? Breaking out. We are, it is breaking down by what amount? 0.8. Right, we're repeatedly multiplying by 0 0.8. We're losing 20% of it, or 20% is decaying, and we're left with 80% of it. Yeah. As, an exponent. as an exponent. As an exponent? I, now, I do want to point out, I would not use an n here for two reasons. What variable should I use? H. Well, remember, do you know how many times we're multiplying by 0 0.8? It's changing, right? So we're going to use a variable, and now we use H. Now, here's something else I want to point out. This is a detail to pay attention to. Please notice this. Listen up. When we use N, that's usually with F of N, and that's almost exclusively with sequences. Because this N stands for the natural number. And remember, those natural numbers are discrete ideas, okay? So we're not going to use n. I'll turn the air up, Caroline, if you promise not to put your head down again. Uh, is, that, is that a fair deal? Okay. So that makes f of n uh, vip in way. Say that one more time. So that makes f of n vip to other equations and stuff. It's more that it's only for sequences. Uh -huh. Trying to make you're trying to say it, it's in my head, but it's not making sense. It's okay. Like, Are you trying to say it's special? It's yes, different. It's special. Okay. I was trying. It so. is only for sequences. Yes. It is different. It's unique. F of n. That idea is kind of the natural numbers. It's only going for sequences. All right. Have you all? And we're trying to answer this question about how much will be active in the dog's bloodstream after three hours, after four point two five hours. Notice using a table. Can you find out? How much medicine is there in three hours? That's fine. Oh, yeah. Using the table or the graph, can you find out how much medicine is there after three hours? Yes. But could you use a table for 4.25 hours? I'm not sure. Huh? That was more detailed. Yeah, but how are you going to get to 4.25? How are you going to get the, on a table at least, what's in between the 4 and the 5? 4 and a half. But what would, how do you know it would be at 4.5? Remember, it's not an additive rate of change, it's multiplicative. No, but like, that's a, an important thing to notice, that we don't really know how to do that. We're actually going to learn about that in 2.4. The attempt to try and do it, because that was 4 hours and 25 minutes. Maybe it's not 25 minutes. A quarter of an hour is how many minutes? 20. How many uh, minutes are there in an hour? 15. 60. What? Oh, and if you think about a clock, how far is it a quarter of a round? A quarter of a round. Thank you. A quarter of an hour. Okay. And that's what. Oh, you're welcome. All right. So we need to pay attention to that. That's an important detail. All right. Did we already identify our domain here? Uh-huh. No? Yes. Domain? Yes. Undecided. yes. Undecided? Yes. Okay, so how about you all answer then, and then we'll see if the front group agrees with us. Okay, okay. Okay, what did y'all put? <laughs> Curly bracket. Okay. X. Win. Oh, X. Element. 
R in curly brackets. As an ugly curly bracket. Okay, so first off, would y'all agree that X is an element of the real numbers? Yes. If it's a continuous, right? If it's getting all those decimals, all those different things in there, yeah, it's real numbers. But here's an important detail to notice. If it is real numbers, that's all real numbers. Meaning it's going from negative infinity to infinity. So let's think about it. Should this domain be infinite or from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity? Yes, no, maybe so, yes. not sure. Yes. Yes? So you're telling me that this dog can have more medicine or have medicine in the past before you gave it any? That doesn't make any sense. Yes, huh? Maybe okay. he took some before. Yeah, maybe okay. he gave it a piece of ham. But I, I would say that based on the way this is, uh, wor or is uh, worded, right? we're looking at them giving medicine from the very beginning, right? So suppose a dose of 60 milligrams of anti-parasite medicine is given to a dog. Notice that's saying it's given for the first time. So are they going to have medicine in their system before that? No. And I will say, I don't know, did y'all know, do y'all know why medicine like ibuprofen and all that kind of stuff tells you to only take medicine however many hours? No. So it's not, well, it can be really bad for you if you take too much at the same time, but medicine actually does break down this way in your system. And so after that four to six hour mark, you, whatever it is, it'll have broken down enough so that if you take more of it, it's not going to hurt your, your body. Another thing to notice is if you actually look at like ibuprofen, they may say, hey, take two to start, but then one every however many hours four afterwards, hours. every four hours. And that's because after four hours, you're still going to have medicine in your system. Mm. Yes. Somewhat. A little bit. Well, I mean, like, if you look at this dog right here, let's say he's taking parasite medicine um, at every four hours, is he still going to have medicine already in his system? So he probably doesn't need the same exact amount of dosage. They might take some here and just take one tablet instead of two and get it back up to that 60 milligrams, and then it starts decreasing. That's why we take medicine the way we do, because it's being um, removed from our system or breaking down over time. It may not be 20%, but it's something like that. Okay, so I just wanted you to see that real world connection. But I would, I would say, let's make the assumption that this is when the dog gets medicine for the first time. And even if we were to say, that he got medicine before there, could he go all the way back to negative infinity? No. No, that dog hasn't lived that long, right? <laughs> that dog is not immortal. So, um, we wouldn't want to say negative super infinity dog. to infinity. Super dog. What would we say? Underdog. What would we need to put on after this R? Uh, <clears throat> negative infinity. <clears throat> no, zero. <clears throat> So when you're using set notation, you're going to use an inequality. Oh. Right? Greater than, less than? Imagine. So it could be greater than or equal to what number? What? Zero. Zero, right? Now, I will say this. Is that medicine going to stay into his system for forever? No. But do we know when it's going to end? No. So we're just going to leave it at x is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, what would be the interval notation for this? First off, could I use interval notation here? Yes, yes. because no, you can't. Yeah, yes, sure. you can. Honestly, yes, you can. Like Hold sure, so, up. Yeah, how about we go look at our notes, the things that we took from? Is he, I think it was in two point one. Yes, you can. Hold Why? up. Let me get the. Because he said, "What is it?" So okay, might, fine. Might as well just assume and guess things. It's common sense. Is it common sense? You can have a common sense test and still make a 50 on it. What? what? I guess it's true, but... Yes, you can, because it's continuous. There we go. If it is continuous, we can use interval notation. And, Gavin, yeah, interval notation is that thing I wrote earlier when I said negative infinity to infinity. That's the minimum 
and that's the maximum. Now, if that was incorrect here, what is the actual minimum value? Mm, talking about the medicine? Yep. Uh, 60 would be the Mom. maximum. Hold on. Mom. Remember, so we're talking about domain. Is domain my inputs or my outputs? Inputs. We need to know domain is inputs. What is my minimum domain value to inputs? On oh, hours? Mm -hmm. Zero. Right. Oh. When I say domain, we're only talking about the inputs, the independent variable. That's why we said x is greater than or equal to zero. Okay? Would I put a bracket or a parenthesis on that zero? Parenthesis. Why? No, it's a bracket. When a number why? can't be equaled. You put parenthesis when it cannot be equaled. You put a bracket when it can be, can be equaled. equaled. Can you equal zero? Can you have a time of zero hours? Yes. Yes. I mean, when is he taking the medicine? You can't. At zero hours. At zero hours. That's why he has 60 milligrams. Okay? So it can be zero. And then what's the maximum that we're assuming here? Five. I mean, we stopped at five, but is there going to be more medicine after that? Yeah. Yes. So, so we don't know when it's really going to stop. We've got to put in infinity. Yeah, we're going to put in infinity because we can't, we don't really know. The side of the Yep. We'll say it that way. That's how I used to draw it. Okay. So go ahead and continue from here, uh, working within your groups on C and D, and then flip over to numbers eight and nine. Hopefully, it gives us some good starting points. Most of us should already have C and D done. I would fix that graph. It's just a little wonky. Wonky. And by a little, I mean it's a real lot wonky. Of, a lot of. Him.